All right, we're back. We're on page 280, and uh, this one's probably going to be one of the harder ones to really convey in video form because there's like a lot of freedom in what we can do with this particular problem. But uh, I'm going to try my best, and hopefully it's enough. Uh, we'll see. So uh, it mentions here you're solving these sorts of problems kind of like a puzzle. So what's going to happen is you're given a lot of information about continuity, and you're given a lot of information about um, slopes, and not slopes, limits, um, and well, sometimes slopes, uh, and we're gonna see what we can do. So first thing you gotta know is that there's this weird-ish, it's not really that weird, uh, new notation, and it says that this, like Q comma R element of, this, this symbol here means, whoa, is an element of, that's the is an element of symbol. So Q comma R is an element of negative six five. It means that both Q and R are values somewhere in the interval from negative six to five exclusive. So if it was brackets instead of parentheses, um, it would be inclusive, but this is exclusive because uh, they're parentheses. So that's, we need to know that because it's gonna come up. Uh, it actually doesn't come up in this problem. So I guess I'll go back at the beginning of probably the next video and explain that again. Um, all right, so we want to sketch a function that satisfies each of the following conditions. All right, let me just like read through them really quickly. The limit as x approaches negative infinity is negative five. So in my mind, I'm thinking that's a horizontal asymptote. So I know there's a horizontal asymptote there um, as we go to negative infinity. We don't know what's happening toward infinity yet. F has zeros, so those are x-intercepts at negative four, negative two, and four. That's pretty good. I, I like that. That's very definitive information. Um, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x is 2, which doesn't tell us anything about the value of f of x at negative 3. In fact, the next piece of information, f is not continuous at x equals negative 3. So if you combine those two pieces of information, we actually know that the limit exists. So like this, whatever, limit from the left equals the limit from the right, but does not equal the value of the function. We still don't know if the function exists at negative 3. Um, but we know that it's not continuous there, so the limit will not equal the value of the function. f of negative 1 is 2, great, solid information. Um, the limit as x approaches negative 1, f of x exists, but f is not continuous at x equals negative 1. Okay. Um, so it exists, but not continuous, and we don't really know anything about what... Oh, we do. f of negative 1 is 2. Okay, so that we're going to be able to use that. Um, so that means the limit must be something other than 2 like uh, five or negative six, whatever. We don't really know, but we know that the limit doesn't equal the value of the function. We know the value of the function is two, so the limit must not be two. F of one is three, uh, F of three is three, good solid info. And then limit as x approaches two is infinity. So that means if I can say that, it means the limit from the left and the right are both infinity. So vertical asymptote where we know the behavior. Limit as x approaches infinity, is negative infinity. So that um, just like dives down at the end, like uh, negative x squared, right? As you go to infinity, that goes to negative infinity. So something like that. All right, so the way that I like to start these is with the most definitive pieces of information. So first of all, what, what's my like x domain? Like what, what values do I need to consider? Negative four looks like the smallest value that I see other than negative infinity, which is arguably a lot smaller. But negative 4 and positive 4 is the most positive value. So I'm going to start off with a set of axes. It's way better. Oh, I lost, uh, I lost contact here. Let's see. It's like if I stop for long enough, it just kind of like goes away. Here we are. Okay, so uh, and then I'm going to put 0. Put it in the middle because I see negative four and positive four. Did I see positive four? I might have made that up. I see positive three. What? Oh no, I see positive four. Whew, a lot going on. All right, so I'm gonna put negative four, negative two, and then I'm not gonna label every point. Four, two. Sometimes I, it really like bites. Uh, it bites back that I don't label every point because then I'll like count wrong or whatever. All right. I'm going to start with definitive info. So here, or maybe a highlighter. Let's use a highlighter on that. Um, this, okay, I'm going to start here. So zeros at those points. So negative four 
is a zero. And then negative two is a zero. And then positive four is a zero. All right, so I've dealt with that. So I'm gonna check it off, done. Next most like concrete piece of information. You know, I'll stay with the same color for the concrete pieces of information. Uh, I know that f of negative one is gonna be two. So negative one, now I need to decide how high do I have to go? Three is the highest number that I see. So let's go one, two, three, there's two. F of negative one is two. So let's put in a solid dot there. Okay, check, done. The next most solid piece of information is I think this, right? F of one and F of three are both three. So F of one is three and F of three is three. Check, got it, okay. So those are all the most uh, concrete things. The next, so now it's kind of like, what do you wanna deal with, right? I would like to deal with, I think the limit as X approaches two being infinite, right? So if the limit as X approaches two is infinite, is infinity, is in, infinite, not finite. Um, so put a vertical asymptote here. And then the limit as I approach is going to be infinity. So that goes up like to the left and the right, both going up. So I'm just gonna kind of go for this and this, and I have used that piece of information. Okay, what's next? The limit, I, I don't really wanna deal with that limit to negative infinity yet. Um, Cause it, that's like a, I'm gonna throw that in at the end. The limit as X approaches negative three is two. The limit as X approaches negative three is two. F is not continuous at X equals negative three. Okay, the limit is two. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna deal with this piece of information right now. And, and simultaneously this piece of information. So let's see, uh, the limit is gonna be two. So I'm just gonna put an open circle there. If you're told a limit and you wanna put it on your graph right away, always do an open circle because you can always go back and fill that in. But if you start with a solid dot and then you find out like, oh, it wasn't continuous or whatever, like it's way harder to fix. So negative three is two. So we're gonna go open circle. And that's the limit. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that the function from the left gets there and the right gets there. So here and here. And like, you can go crazy there. Like it could be like sinusoidal, like it could vary a lot, whatever. You always go with the simplest thing I find. You don't wanna, you don't wanna give this thing more characteristics than what are listed here if you can avoid it. So we're done with that. Right, the limit is definitely uh, two and it's not continuous because I didn't fill anything in. So it couldn't be continuous because the value of the function can't be equal to the limit if there is no value of the function. So uh, it's kind of like a loophole, but not really. Uh, the limit as X approaches negative one exists. So I'm reading, uh, I'm on to this one, but F is not continuous there. All right, so the limit is gonna be Limit x approach is negative one exists, but it, okay. So that's telling me basically, since I know that at negative one, the y value is two, I just need the limit to be anything other than two. So, and the limit needs to exist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with an open circle like up here and go like this. And then uh, do I know anything else that's happening between negative one and one. Not really. So what I'll do is just kind of do this. Okay, so I made the limit exist at one at negative one, but the function is not continuous there because the limit is not two. And the value of the function is two. So it can't be continuous. So I think that works. Check mark there. And now I just need the limit as x approaches negative infinity to be negative five. So let's see. Uh, we're going with this one now. Okay, so negative five, not drawn to scale because I didn't think it through. So there's my asymptote and I just need to approach that as X goes to negative infinity. So I think that's good. And then uh, I need the limit as X approaches infinity 
So I'm looking at this last piece of information here, like this one. The limit as x approaches infinity is going to be negative infinity, which means it just dives down. I know there's a zero at x equals four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the zero on the way. And then, I mean, I could keep going straight down. Uh, I can, can do this, whatever. That accomplishes the goal. And there you go. I think we got every piece of information. So what's mandatory here? The things that are mandatory are basically the filled in points and the vertical asymptote and the open circles. Filled in points. So, but are they like, so I had a choice at, um, so this is where like it's going to start looking terrible if I start like, you know, pointing things out. But like, uh, I had a choice on this. I could have put it anywhere. Um, I didn't want to put it below the axis because I wasn't told there were more zeros. If I was told there were more zeros for the function, then I'd be comfortable going into the negatives and coming back out when I hit another zero, but I didn't know. Um, I could have put it down at one, at positive one. That wouldn't have been a problem. I could put it up at like 10, not a problem. Just need the limit to exist. Uh, I don't need to have nice lines connecting everything. Like we could potentially, uh, I mean, I don't like, don't do these sorts of things because you don't want to add things and potentially mess up. But like, uh, there's no, it could have just been like this. Like there's, there's no way to know that this isn't just, you know, all these. And then you do kind of need that shape there. Could have done this and could have just like gone straight down. Like that also meets all the requirements. Um, you know, there's a lot of options here, but uh, I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to come back and do the next one, which is really similar, but it has a couple of additional little things to go with it. So I hope you found this helpful and uh, I will see you then.